do a circle on it or a, a rectangle? A circle. Okay. Radiographs show us uh, the condor chick is in a left wing malposition, um, and out in the wild in a left wing malposition, and um, the chick can't get enough strength to, to pierce the shell that way, and it would run out of oxygen and die. So that's why we would have to manually pick the shell, cut down that part, and that's what we're doing today. We're just gonna clean the spot real quick where Ron's gonna actually do the drill. Drilling a hole in the condor is always a nerve-wracking experience because you're putting a tool against an eggshell. Okay, very, very small bite. <laughs> One risk, obviously, is, is making the hole too big, uh, crushing that area. We have to be careful about it. We don't pierce that inner membrane. Good progress. You got it. Dusty in there, sorry, buddy. <laughs> I peel the membrane all the way off, right? Yeah. There it's moving. There you go. So that little triangle there is the egg tooth. This is what it uses to thin the shell. And if it was in a proper position, that would be pushing against the shell surface to cause that pit. Can I help? Yeah. That's a good start. The chick's activity is great. Hopefully, it'll expand that pip side on its own. And Chick will come out, mom and dad will sit on it, keep it warm. Fingers crossed. <laughs> mom and dad have been sitting on a fake egg. We're gonna take that from them and replace the pipped egg in the nest. But we need to sneak it in there so we don't cause any stress. If we go in and disturb the birds too much or for too long, it might take a longer time to, for them to come back into the nest. And therefore, the, that pipped egg is getting cold. So I'll start down here. Just as long as they're not in the roost area or in the ledge, it gives time for Debbie to be able to put the egg back. Rabbits are their favorite, so they'll usually come down for rabbits, but it's just rats and spleen today, so not one of their favorites. Next way is looking over towards the catch pen, definitely interested. Uh, Ho-Ho's still sitting on the egg in the nest box. So he's gonna go in to rake a bit. He's going in the pen now. Maintenance is kind of a, a normal thing, so we'll go in there and rake and clean pools. We just don't want them to think anything's up. Debbie Ron got his attention, so he's coming out. He's on the nest box barrier on the roost perch. So he just flew over to the goal post. Debbie's going in to get the fake egg out. Still good, Debbie. They're still kind of both focused on Ron. Debbie is placing the real egg back. All right, looks like Debbie just took the dummy egg out, and she is clear of the nest box. Now that the parents have been reunited with their real egg, we'll be monitoring the progress with the cameras that are in the nest. Um, but usually, we, we just leave it alone and, and uh, give it a chance to come out on its own. This California condor chick was malpositioned in the egg, so we needed to go in and help break the shell. And then the chick was able to cap the egg on its own. And the parents came in, hatched under parents. Our chick has been in the nest box with its parents for about 45 days now. And it's been doing really well. Today, we will be getting hands on the chick for the first time. Thanks for coming up. All right. You're going to bring the chick out of the nest box. Mm -hmm. I'll do a quick physical. Kristen will vaccinate. OK. And we'll work as fast as we can. You know, these little chicks don't really know what's going on, so. OK. All right. We do whatever we can to raise the best possible release candidates. We don't want the chicks to imprint on people. We want them to be independent, not expect food from people.
My role in this is to keep the parents away from the nest while Debbie's going in to gather the chick. We don't want them to see Debbie grabbing the chick. It could cause some stress. The chick is defensive, hissing at me, striking out at me. And that's exactly what we want to see in a chick that's going to be released. This is a hands-off bird, and so we keep them shielded so they're not seeing what's going on. We'll do our physical exam, we'll get our blood samples, and we also put in a microchip. We can read it with a scanner, and we know exactly which bird it is. We'll wait for the results, but I don't anticipate that there's any problems with this bird. the chick sack in the nest box. We want to see the chick just being really calm, not, not going into a defensive posture. So we want to see like wing begging, he wants to get fed. Next way still on that back perch. Still kind of walking around though, shifting around a little bit. Hoho's flying from the goalpost to the ledge. So right here, he's kind of looking into the nest box. So thinking about going in. These behaviors that we're seeing are actually really, really good signs. The chick's getting sleepy, <laughs> kind of settling into the corner. The chick is sleepy? Mm hmm They're nice and calm, so I think we're good to go. It'll look good? Looks yeah. great. Good. We're feeling very confident this chick is going to make it and it's going to do well. Everything we do here at the Safari Park, you know, contributes to that animal's story. Every animal has a story, and it's always such a privilege to be, be part of it, especially when it, when it works out really well. Eventually, hopefully in the future, we'll be able to step away from the species and it'll be self-sustaining. <laughs>